painful experience whilst on remand in Wandsworth Prison. Somebody mistook him for Gary Wilmot. Craig Charles. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight, an American journalist who has witnessed poverty, filth, violence and social collapse, and that was just driving through South London on the way from the airport, <laughs> PJ O'Rourke. <laughs> As usual, the beginning of round one is where we tend to start. Ian and Craig, uh, an absolute banker for you. Oh, it's Nick Leeson. Yeah. Finally put away for wearing a baseball cap. Six and a half years, we're doing what the Chancellor gets paid for. Mm. <laughs> Singapore prison, I would think. That's it? it? That's the answer, certainly. <laughs> well well spotted. I can give him some survival tips if you want them, you know what I mean? I think he should get soap on a rope. <laughs> um, Do you think Bonsworth's like right. Changi? I don't know. I've never been to Changi. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything about uh, the, the film that's supposed to be made of Nick Leeson? And who's supposed to be starring in it? It's meant to be Hugh Grant, isn't it? Mm. That just looks just like him. <laughs> I suppose Hugh went down for a bit as well. <laughs> Did the story break in, in the US? We understand that there was a Brit who was sentenced not to be caned and that he has appealed. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> technically, Nick Leeson owes Baring's Bank no less than £860 million. Pounds. That's £859,999,980 lost in fraudulent dealings and 20 quid for the letter telling him he was overdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, defending the, uh, the fact that his client had used scissors, glue and coloured paper to forge bank documents, Leeson's lawyer claimed he had been initially led astray by people who should have known better. John <laughs> Noakes and Valerie Singleton are helping to the Paul and PJ, a special relationship for you. Oh yes, sir, this is uh, John Major. And uh, who are these people here? Oh, well, they're, I don't know. <laughs> this fellow, though. Just trying to peel an orange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, fancy meeting you here. <laughs> and put it all together. Peace in Ireland. Brought there by Clinton. You had been trying for hundreds of years at Peace in Ireland. <laughs> took Clinton the better part of a weekend. <laughs> yes, very good of him to pop over and mm -hmm. sort it out for us. Um, uh, and and he, he fitted it in after Bosnia. Yes, yes. That was the first half of the week. He didn't even have to go there. Yeah, it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Mm. Just sent a fax. That extraordinary. Stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a big no, fan you guys do Clinton? save the world. There's no doubt oh. about it. Thomas Clinton fan. Yes. Yeah. As a Republican, without him, we would be nothing in the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't you guys... I mean, isn't this bad news for the Republicans? Clinton has saved the world. Yes. And he might get in again. Yes. Yes, he could. But then again, there, uh, there could be... Our own people could be elected. I mean, you know, the Republicans are the party that says that government doesn't work and then they get elected and prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly worried to read, is this true that Clinton carries around in his luggage the, the red button, the red nuclear button? Yes, but it's not attached to anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes him feel that. very important. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a cup of coffee every time he presses right. it. <laughs> and what was all this business about meeting up with Jerry Adams? Did you read about that? Yeah, I can't. Did, no one in the United States, this is one, journalism at its best, all of the interviewing of Jerry Adams, and presumably all of the chat at the White House, too. Did anybody ever say, Jerry, did you actually ever, did you actually ever kill anybody? Or do you just do the PR for it? You know? <laughs> uh, President Clinton's uh, first stop in the British Isles was at Westminster Abbey, where he laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warrior. He then went on to number 10 Downing Street, where he had tea at the home of the unknown prime minister. <laughs> Uh, a White House spokesman said that uh, pres President Clinton was delighted with his rapturous reception in Northern Ireland, adding, the President is absolutely screwed into the ceiling. <laughs> There's nothing this man won't shag, is there? <laughs> uh, Ian and Craig, uh, War of the Sofas for you. This is Anne and Nick. This is Richard and Judy, and they're about to come to London, aren't they? Anne and Nick's about to be scrapped. That's and the live of birds, Liverpool. Oh, that's Liverpool. I hate to tell you. Ah, uh, fascinating. <laughs> and that's Tom Cruise. And apparently, Tom Cruise wouldn't go to Liverpool, uh, and that's why Richard and Judy are, are kind of moving up to London because people won't go to Liverpool. I wish Stan Collymore hadn't. But um, <laughs> the real reason they're moving is because because uh, all the store detectives know who he is now, so he's coming down here. <laughs> Yes, and what were uh, Anne and Nick doing? Anne and Nick... Don't you think that's rather unfair, given that he was cleared? Who? Nick. Oh, um... 
Uh, Richard. Uh, Richard. 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 Mm. Yes, quite. Yeah, it's probably. It is. It is unfair. Thank you for slapping my wrist. No, no, mm. no, no. Just son of Yoda triumphs again. <laughs> I think people who get off should stick together. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think you should know the difference between Nick Aaron and Richard Maidley, given the fact that you were just on his show about a week ago? <laughs> Was Nick the one with the skirt and the blonde? <laughs> Yeah, so you probably don't know any of these people, do you, PJ? I'm glad. You don't know how much you know. <laughs> the Liverpool people are coming to London, and the other people are being sacked. Forget Bosnia. <laughs> this is the big one. It's quite right, yes. Uh, in return for the BBC's expenditure of £48 million, pounds, uh, Good Morning with Anne and Nick built up an audience of just 700,000, uh, which works out at about £70 pounds per viewer. Uh, maybe next time they just put up the test card and send us all a cheque. <laughs> The, uh, the show's former producer, Mike Hollingsworth, said, A lot of people claimed we pretended that Anne and Nick were married. We never did. Christ, I am high enough profile for people to know I am married to her anyway. Uh, this is Mike Hollingsworth, by the way, the producer married to Anne Diamond, blonde, tall man. No? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, also in the world of daytime TV, Richard and Judy, who coincidentally had both uh, Ian and Paul on their show last week, uh, have announced that uh, they're moving the programme down from Liverpool to London because... Top celebrities will not travel up from London to be interviewed. <laughs> Why do they think husband and wife teams have better sexual chemistry? God, remember when we had Paul's wife on the show? <laughs> what <Fwa-duh. laughs> Yes, I remember when I had Paul's wife on the show. <laughs> God, Angus, when you get hold of a joke, you don't let it go, do you? Uh, Paul and PJ, uh, ground control to Major Ron. Uh, as Fergie's turning into a butterfly, slowly. <laughs> you can't nick these, she's saying. Well, she lost her jewels and they found them again. Yes, who's they? <laughs> um, well, it was, a, it was a bit of an argument, wasn't there? Because British Airways claimed that they had done it and uh, they had solved the case and the FBI said, oh, no, and it Clinton was Clinton claimed that he'd done it. <laughs> <laughs> But they didn't find all of them, did they? No, that's the first time she's lost five stones that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> they lost the wrong bit, really, didn't they? Hmm. They lost Fergie and we'd kept the necklace. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> The, uh, the first anyone knew about the incident was, was when uh, Heathrow Security reported that a smashed royal bag had been found in Terminal 4. The, uh... No, no, go on, do it. Foot... <laughs> Fill in your own punchline. <laughs> Uh, which uh, Royal Fracas signals the end of uh, this particular line of questioning, and uh, the scoreline at this stage is uh, all for one, but more importantly, one for all. A nourishing image now to keep in mind for the next 25 minutes as we give the panel a first taste of our caption competition. Ian and Craig, this will be yours. Uh, Paul and PJ, this for you. A touch of uh, nostalgia now as we cast our minds back to last week uh, when round two took the form of a trip down memory lane when we asked what happened next. As before, four panellists with but a single question. So, what happened after this? Mm. Beautiful rural scene. Oh, there you Even go. Even more beautiful. <laughs> it's our boys. Well, that's new age humour, isn't it? Someone shouting, Porky, it's a policeman. <laughs> the pig, you see. Uh -huh. I would have thought the police march in, trying mm. to do a good job, are hassled, accosted and assaulted by undesirable elements, <laughs> and end up kicking all their heads in. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. Way off. Way off. Sorry. Way off. It was in Islington. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember when it was all fields, then. <laughs> the Islington Consul authorities came in, as you saw, in their nice uniforms, and gave those people a huge consul grant. <laughs> you haven't been Is that Hugh Grant's long, middle name, it? Hugh Council Grant? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, mm. it's like the miners' strike, except without horses. <laughs> Ian's gone, everyone. <laughs> 
Well, let's uh, let's have a look and uh, and see just how hopelessly off the mark those guesses were. I'm a county court bailiff. I'm here from Scotland. Oh! Oh! Stratford County Court. I have a warrant for repossession of this British this man. You please vacate it at once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? <laughs> Oh, you're yes. How would you get a cow to balance like that? <laughs> Years of <ago. laughs> uh, It was the confrontation uh, near Stratford upon Avon, in fact, uh, in April 1993, uh, between police and so called New Age travellers after the authorities tried to stop them uh, holding an illegal all night rave. That's what it was. You went through a bit of a hippie phase, didn't you, PJ? I did, I mm. did, but we used to swallow that stuff rather than throw it at others. <laughs> Quite a nice high, smoke it sometimes, although that looked hard to light. <laughs> <laughs> and then you try drying it first, mm. it's a bit easier, I believe. Um, <laughs> Uh, the bailiff there was uh, pelted with cow dung, although the Daily Mail referred to it only as mud. There's clearly enough shit in the rest of the paper without having to actually use the word. Uh, as crowds gathered for the rave, uh, farmers complained that many of the travellers' dogs were worrying their sheep. Apparently they were going around telling them the Libyans have got nuclear weapons. <laughs> Which uh, anarchic behaviour ends this particular round of mudslinging, and the chasm has uh, failed to open up between the two teams. Both teams still have four. <laughs> and so to the familiar bosom that is our odd one out round, four teacher's pets, which one's the Tony Blair? <laughs> Paul, your uh, four crowned heads are Princess Diana, Prince William, Bisto the Royal Spaniel, and shoplifter Clive Barrett. Bisto the Royal Spaniel. Um, is he the only one who's ever up, end up in a stew? <laughs> I, mean, I don't mean sort of, you know, you know, lit you know, I mean like, you know, for real, was he served up one Christmas? Um, you notice when they found the dog collar amongst the dumplings? <laughs> Any one of them's a dog. An inspired Very answer is... Is. <laughs> well, Trained professional <laughs> observer! <laughs> It wasn't on Richard and Judy for nothing, I <laughs> How much you get then? <laughs> Sadly, I did it for free. Uh, that is sad, yeah. <laughs> um, She's the only one who's given a speech about the homeless. Well, that's also true, yes. Mm. She's noticed they don't have homes. So who says she's thick? <laughs> Well, he, yes. She's been out visiting people in the middle of the night. Perhaps she's visited all of them. Is that dog dying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll get a late night visit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she should be allowed one. to do that, do you? Imagine waking up and there's the Princess of Wales. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> have a heart attack. Be it? Is the dog the only one that's lost all its legs and to compensate they've stuck it on a brown stick? <laughs> <laughs> so you can pick it up and carry it around like that. <laughs> No, I'm right. <laughs> It's a combined dog stick. It can always chase itself. I think I'm going to have to give it to you, aren't I? It's that all of them have been electronically tagged, uh, except for Princess Diana, uh, who's always been able to slip out of the palace at dead of night undetected uh, to visit hospitals, obviously, uh, before popping round to James Hewitt's for a quick bunk up. <laughs> Not even allegedly. No. <laughs> Clive Barrett was one of the first criminals chosen by the Home Office to test their much-trumpeted electronic tagging system, despite which he managed to leave his house 40 times and even went shoplifting at MFI. <laughs> uh, police went round to his house and a violent struggle ensued, but not even they could get the corner carousel to fit between them. <laughs> All the Royal Spaniels are implanted with a small microchip. Uh, this can be done by a vet using a small electronic dart, though Prince Philip prefers to do it himself using a double-barrel shotgun. <laughs> It's got a remote control on it, hasn't it? It's like a television set. I remember reading about this. So if the spaniel runs too far, you just go like that, and it blows up. <laughs> yes, that's right, Ian. Yes, that's right. Uh, PJ, your transatlantic uh, selection consists mm. of Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jackson, O.J. Simpson juror Tracy Hampton, and the lovely Paula Yates. I must confess mystification, but I will pick the O.J. Simpson juror as being the odd creature out.
mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the grounds that she is the one of the four who has not loused up a spouse's sex life. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you, how are you suggesting the other three have? Well, O.J. Simpson, for a start. <laughs> He, he I mean, pretty much like he, he, I mean, he, he took yes. the biscuit on that one, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm. You're not Have really it, anywhere anything near. Anything to do with the fact that Hillary Clinton's the only one who's kind of denied having plastic surgery, what all the others have had? It's Is it book books? deals? Books. They both said at the same time. Um, well, seeing as our side's question, mm. <laughs> <laughs> which you singularly failed to answer. <laughs> First time I've spoken, Mister. Um, <laughs> Paul, uh, what were you going to say Good about deals. books? Well, you see the uh, O.J. Simpson... Oh, great. Or... <laughs> I know they an answer. No, you do, Paul. God, no. <laughs> no, please, I insist. Well, no, one of no, you do, no, for God's to... sake. All right, yeah. I'll do it then. Right. Book deals. Um, the O.J. Simpson juror has uh, sold a book, um, as a book on her recent uh, escapades. Paulie Yates has done that. Michael Jackson bought a book out when he was being accused of child abuse and all that and said, no, no, it's not like that at all. I'm like this. And um, <laughs> Hillary Clinton is the only one who hasn't uh, written a book. Has she written a book, Hillary Clinton? She does a newspaper column, but yeah. I think we're a few sort of a few homilies and pieties short of a book. As right. Let's yeah. say that she's the odd one out, then, and she hasn't recently written a book. Uh, I can't really give it to you because it's got nothing to do with books. Oh. <laughs> um, if you manage to get who Tracy Hampton is, you'll probably get the right answer. If that's any She's a juror. Whatsoever. Yes, I told you that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is she famous? Did she pose in Playboy? She did. So uh, they've all posed in Playboy. The Hillary Clinton spread was. And they quite wonder notorious. why their sales. They wonder why their sales are down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to give it to you. Is that all of them have at some time posed uh, nude for photographs, except Michael Jackson, uh, who, according to witness statements, was rather keener on collecting photographs of others. Um, Hillary Clinton was photographed nude as part of a university experiment to measure intelligence. Although she fell for that one, I'm surprised. <laughs> surprised <laughs> Uh, curiously enough, George and Barbara Bush uh, both took part in similar experiments at their college, uh, pictures which they still use as their passport photographs, in fact. <laughs> uh, Paula Yates uh, appeared in Penthouse magazine, although she was careful to show only part of her breasts. The other parts were still at the factory. <laughs> Craig, your four uh, media darlings are Julie Burchill, Danny Baker, Arthur Smith and yourself. Oh, wow. Julie Burchill's a girl. Yes. Um, Ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about convictions? Um, have they all been convicted of something except me? Stuff you anything? Um, no, I don't know anything at all. You haven't been watching this show, have you? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, they've all. Julie Birchall has columns in various places. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been a columnist before. Um, so is she. So is Arthur. What about Danny Baker? He hasn't got a column. Yes, I'm going to have to give it to you. Well done. Uh, it is that all of them have at one time uh, written a column for a specific magazine. Time out. Is the right answer. I did that. I used to rob all this stuff. That's what I just had to tell everyone. It is with have the you just admitted a crime? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is uh, news. Mm. Nothing, just a little bit of plagiarism. I have told him, and he said it was good form. Bit of plagiarism? plagiarism. Isn't that what you get on your teeth? <laughs> Uh, yes, they all, they all wrote for uh, Time Out, uh, with the exception of Danny Baker. Although uh, never a columnist, Danny Baker makes a habit of writing to Time Out. In 1988, he, Jonathan Ross and several others objected to a column written go. by Craig <laughs> uh, concerning a fantasy day of violence uh, in New York, on the absurd grounds that it resembled another article concerning a fantasy uh, day of violence in New York, written by a certain PJ O'Rourke. <laughs> He's always nicking my material, that PJ. Oh, I am. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I remember um, his smeg jokes being particularly good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he coined the phrase smeg head. Very good. I like knob gags, not my girlfriend refused to wear them. There's <laughs> <laughs> um, one for your next piece, PJ. <laughs> and, and finally, in this round, Ian, uh, a little break for you now with uh, coffee. Donuts? Yes, please. Avocados? Yes, please. And watching cricket? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll have all of that. Cricket's the only one I send you to sleep. Oh, really? <laughs> are you a cricket man, are you? 
No, I just quite enjoyed watching Atherton for ten and a half hours. You see, Paul, that's what I call really entertaining <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Ninety minutes, men kicking a ball about. This must be... <laughs> you are about. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is something to do with surveys, isn't it? Is it stuff that's bad for your heart? Eating donuts is very bad for your heart. Drinking coffee, very bad for your heart. Eating avocados, terrible mm -hmm. for your heart. Absolutely appalling, especially with prawn and that sort of gungy stuff on them. Um, but watching cricket is very relaxing, enjoyable, pleasurable, and good for the heart. And you live longer and become a more interesting, rounded human being. <laughs> no, it just seems as if you are living longer. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it is a health question, but not, uh, not quite that answer. Cholesterol? I won't, thank you, no. Um, <laughs> they all give you mad cow disease. When Except cows coffee. go mad, they drink coffee, eat donuts and play cricket. <laughs> But they don't touch avocados. No, they're yeah. not stupid. <laughs> avocados, the odd one out. Is the wrong answer, also. Um, Choice gonna... of two, go for it. Donut. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. The answer, <laughs> the answer You're is. You're hopeless. <laughs> I'm sorry. All of them uh, increase your sex drive, in fact, uh, with the obvious exception of uh, drinking coffee. Uh, a new report has concluded that watching sport, even cricket, uh, stimulates your sexual hormones. So really? that's obviously why you're enjoying watching my catheter. <laughs> <laughs> Donuts were shown in a recent test to cause sexual arousal in men, so now we know what the hole in the middle's for. <laughs> uh, coffee is the odd one out, as it can lead to both impotence and insomnia. So it not only keeps you awake at night, but ensures that the traditional remedy for that isn't available to you either. <laughs> Uh, all of which uh, mounting excitement brings us limping to the end of this third round and the situation would seem to be that uh, Paul and PJ are wobbling uncertainly with four whilst Ian and Craig are as steady as a rock with eight. Those fans of cataclysmic finales will barely be able to uh, contain themselves now <laughs> as we launch headlong into our final missing words round with the occasional headline forcibly inserted from this week's guest publication, Dogs Today, the <laughs> magazine for dogs today. Uh, hence the title. So, Major offers taxpayers cash to set up Diana as what? England rugby coach. <laughs> <laughs> Jupiter <Ambassador>. probe. <laughs> Jupiter probe. <laughs> Roving ambassador? Okay. Well, goodwill envoy will do, yes. Uh, next, what needs waterproof socks? Jesus Christ needs waterproof socks. <laughs> Robert, Ma Robert Maxwell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I couldn't now, possibly I say. Really. <laughs> My dog is, in fact, uh, the answer. <laughs> and to prove it, here's page seven oh from this month's God. Dogs Today. <laughs> That's Billy, who is a miniature schnauzer. And also has a miniature schnauzer. Um, <laughs> next, bogus bishop uh, made two nuns what? Out of Lego. <laughs> Pregnant. Uh, well done. Uh, next, can what be dangerous? Photographing your kids in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> be dynamite. She was cleared as well. Honestly, you've got no solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> Trees. Can trees be dangerous? Trees. Um, this again from the dog's world. Oh. Uh, <laughs> next, Queen Mother steps out with what? James Gilby. <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr. New Hip. New Hip is probably right, but uh, it's not actually the Walking answer. Sticks? I'll give you one. Will for... Carling. Um, <laughs> there you are. Slow sorry. on our royal family. Um, <laughs> Uh, a wave and two sticks. I'll give you one for walking right. sticks. Next, guide dog for what? Michael Hutchins, the colour blind. <laughs> You're just sucking up to Ian now. Aren't you? <laughs> the thick is in fact the slightly. <laughs> it refers to owners of uh, bull terriers. In fact, that's who the thick are. Uh, next, yanks by what? Wrong bridge again. <laughs> Queen Mother's old hip. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. by anything. <laughs> hit sick, Including Cherry Adams' version of history. Um, <laughs> ooh, uh, Royal Train is in fact... Royal Train? Uh, Wisconsin Royal Railways train, have bought a Royal Train. Oh, yeah. And finally, uh, women prefer what to men? That's just it, isn't it, you know? 
anything. Anything <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Mm. No. Dogs. Oh, it's got to be dogs. It's the right answer. <laughs> uh, the fairly obvious answer in, in the circumstances. Uh, which barking nonsense brings us panting to the end of tonight's dog fight? And the festive situation is that this week's Christmas puddings are Paul and PJ with five, whilst this week's Christmas crackers are Ian and Craig with 13. Uh, so, the naked photograph of Hillary Clinton to our winners, the naked photograph of George Bush to our losers. Uh, but before we unlock the guests' leg irons, there's just time to horsewhip them through the caption competition. Ian and Craig, what do you think of for this? Um, new government bike parking scheme revealed. <laughs> <laughs> naked sky... naked skydiving tragedy. <laughs> Unemployed, use the speed bumps. <laughs> Aliens create new porn circles. <laughs> uh, Paul and PJ, how about you? Go with the painfully obvious. Three men found shot on Essex Road. Police suspect cocaine involvement. <laughs> <laughs> on which uh, season? Head and shoulders fails to work on <laughs> Jeep owners. Thank you. A severe case of Vandruff. <laughs> <laughs> On which pun we say thank you to our panellists, uh, Ian Hislop and Craig Charles, uh, Paul Merton and PJ O'Rourke. And uh, I leave you with news that after the BBC drops the Anna Nick show, there are fears that there may be even less sexual chemistry with Nick Owen's replacement. <laughs> After Barry Manilow complains of sinus problems, a doctor is sent in to investigate. <laughs> and the trainer of this year's Grand National winner, Royal Athlete, begins to suspect that the horse may have celebrated his victory by going out for a curry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>